Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Sloth Law. Before we get started today, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button if you like the content, and go ahead and give that like button a hit as well. So today, we're going to be talking about the McNaughton Rule. So in law, there are a series of defenses to behavior that would otherwise be illegal. One of the best known of these defenses is insanity. You usually hear it, not guilty by reason of insanity. But what does that actually mean? And how do you determine who is and who is not insane? There's a series of different tests that you can use, but the best known of these is the McNaughton Rule, which was named after a particular man from England named Daniel McNaughton. Now, Daniel McNaughton had been known to his friends and acquaintances as a good, hard-working man. He had a, a wood-turning business that he had learned from his father. Well, he decided to sell that business at one point and was found wandering about Britain, popping up in different cities, until about January of 1843. At that point, McNaughton found himself in a part of London called St. Martin in the Fields. When he was there, he saw a man. Now, he thought he saw the Prime Minister of England, Robert Peel. Who he actually saw was a man named Edward Drummond, a regular bureaucrat. McNaughton approached Drummond, pulled a pistol out of his pocket, and shot the man square in the back before he got tackled by the local police and dragged off to jail. While originally Edward Drummond was able to walk away from this particular encounter, unfortunately for him, medicine in the 19th century, not the cleanest thing in the world, and he ended up dying on April 25th, 1843. During his initial hearing, McNaughton made the only real statement he made during his case, and that was that Tories in my native city have compelled me to do this. They follow, persecute me wherever I go. This goes back to McNaughton's original thought that he was shooting Robert Peel, who was a Tory. During his actual trial, several witnesses were brought forward to discuss McNaughton's general behavior, as the defense was claiming insanity. In particular, the defense put on a series of doctors, and these doctors discussed McNaughton's state of mind. But here's the kicker. The prosecution didn't do the same. They did not bring on witnesses to counter McNaughton's doctor's statements about his insanity. In fact, quite the opposite. The prosecution stopped, and the prosecutor was noted to say, I cannot press for a verdict against the prisoner also known as, the prosecutor says, I can't prosecute this man. McNaughton was found not guilty by reason of insanity after the court found that McNaughton's delusion caused him to be incapable of telling right from wrong and exercising control over himself as a result. In short, McNaughton was found to be incapable of understanding that he was violating the law and was therefore not guilty. As you might expect, a man being found not guilty after having shot a member of the government caught people's attention, including the House of Lords. Now, the Lords have the ability to call judges before them to answer a series of questions, and that's just what the House of Lords did. Generally, these questions were related to the insanity defense itself, such as how it applies, who it applies to, what the elements should be. Now, one of the things you have to understand about common law, which they have in Britain, which we have in the United States, is that it is very, very fact-driven. Every case is a little bit different because of the different facts, which means that the most lawyer answer you will ever hear is, it depends. And that's largely what the judges said in this instance as well. But, in response to some of the Lord's questions, the judges did lay out a couple of general rules. One of these is that if someone engages in an action and they know it's against the law when they do it, but the person did it under the influence of a delusion, the person can't claim insanity. For example, a husband kills his wife. For example, a husband kills his wife because he has a delusion that says she's cheating on him. He then leaves the house, goes to a neighbor, and says, I'm going to go to jail for this. 
his statement, the I'm going to go to jail for this, indicates that he understands that what he did was wrong. So, even though the delusion drove him to act, he is not going to be classified as insane because he understood what he did was wrong. In laying out what has been come to be known as the McNaughton Rule, the judges stated that every man is to be presumed to be sane and to possess a sufficient degree of reason to be responsible for his crimes unless the contrary be proved to their satisfaction and that to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that at the time of committing the act, the party accused as laboring under such a defect of reason from disease or of the mind as not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing, or if he did know it, that he did not know what he was doing was wrong. In short, when the accused did the thing he's accused of doing, was he able to distinguish right and wrong? That's the rule. They also opened up an interesting avenue in the realm of belief and the nature of the delusion. There, the example they gave was, if under the influence of his delusion, he supposes another man to be in the act of attempting to take away his life, and he kills that man, as he supposes in self-defense, the accused would be exempt from punishment. If the delusion was that the deceased had inflicted a serious injury to his character and fortune, and he killed that man in revenge for such an injury, he would be liable to punishment. These discussions formed the basis of the insanity defense for the next hundred years or so, and is still used in some parts of the world, including the United States. So, what happened to McNaughton after his trial? Well, after the trial, he was transferred to Newgate Prison to the State Criminal Lunatic Asylum in Bethlehem Hospital. He spent 21 years in that hospital, living a fairly quiet life. In 1864, he was transferred to the newly opened Broadmoor Asylum, and due to declining health, he died shortly thereafter on May 3rd, 1865, never having spent another day as a free man. I hope you enjoyed the discussion on sanity and the McNaughton rule in particular. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and reach out to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Until next time.